All right. So in front of you right now, you should have a sheet of white paper. You should have a cup of water that you're sharing with the person next to you. You should have watercolor paints that have the primary, secondary colors, and then black and brown. Uh, and then there should be water on them. And you should have a paper towel and you should have a round brush and a flat brush. Each person should have that. Does everybody have all those things? Awesome. Um, and then also you should have a pencil, which you can share with your neighbor if you need to, because I forgot to say that. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take your sheet of paper and we're gonna label this. So we're gonna fold it into four to start. So fold it in half hamburger style. Is that what they say in elementary? I never had heard that before, and people taught me. <laughs> then you're gonna fold it in hamburger style again. So we have four square, four rectangles. Okay. Do you need another minute or can I keep going? Okay, so then we're gonna label them. All right, the first one is going to be wet on wet. Mm -hmm. If you need to get, come get another piece of paper, you can. The second, excuse me, the second one will be wet on dry. Then a wash. That's the only way that you can see all four. There you go. And the last one is fade. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if you guys do it like uh, this way on the paper, that's fine too. Okay. Do you need another minute or is everybody good to go? It looks like everybody's ready. Okay, uh, so the first thing I want to talk about with watercolors that is different than what you might have done in the past is in middle school, I would like you to never dip your brush in the paint and start painting. Does that make all, does that blow all your minds? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be mixing new colors on the lid and also you're going to be adding a lot more water because when you go to actually paint watercolors, you want to be very see-through and very watery, okay? So what I'd like everybody to try right now is to mix two different colors on the lid Maybe each person could do one color and then you could kind of share. And so what you're gonna do, you can use either brush right now, and you're going to sort of add a bunch of water to one of the squares on your lid, and then you're gonna mix two colors together. So I'm gonna do purple and blue. And then you're gonna make another one and another square. So in this one, maybe I'll mix, I don't know, red and orange. You can make more than that. And hopefully they'll kind of stay in the squares. If you have a lid that is inferior, I'm sorry, and the squares bleed together, I'm sorry. But the key is that you have added extra water. See how I'm like dipping my brush in the water a lot?
right, who needs more time? A few of you. Okay, take one more minute and then we're going to keep going. I think two is enough. You, if you want to do three, you can. I think that's fine. <laughs> Got excited. Yeah, today, so I, I mixed um, yellow and blue, and then I added um, and then I, I put green in, I don't know why. And then I added um, orange. Uh, I don't know why. And then I added um, purple. I put, I, and then I added um, purple. I put, I, and then I added um, purple. And then it made this brownish And then I added a lot of purple. And I, I added some purple. And that looks like a really nice color. Like a really cool color. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so we are going to paint in the square that says wet on wet first. And what you're going to do, because it says wet on wet, and we're practicing techniques that you'll specifically be using in your final painting. So because you guys are going to be painting inside of shapes, let's practice doing that. So what I'd like you to do now is take one of your brushes, it doesn't matter which one, and you are going to dip it in water and you're going to paint a shape. I'm going to do a circle out of just water. So do you want me to draw, use a pencil so you can see it up on the board? All right, this is the circle I painted that is filled with water. Okay, now it's like Goldilocks. You want enough water that it's wet, but you don't want this to be a lake either, okay? Then you are gonna dip your brush in one of the colors and you're gonna do like a dot and it should spread out because it's wet on wet or a line. Then you're gonna wash and dry your brush and then you're gonna dip your brush in another color that you made and do another dot. And this is kind of, will give like a tie-dye effect. And the key is so that you don't ruin your neighbor's nice color that they made on the lid to wash and dry your brush in between each time you switch colors. Look, I must not have gotten enough water on this edge. So as you're doing it, notice how the paint is very see-through. This is not dark like if you were painting with acrylic paint. Okay? All right, so take one more minute and then we'll go to wet on dry. All right, are we ready for the next thing? Yeah. So let's all really quickly do a what not to do at the bottom of this. So since this is wet on dry, we're going to leave the paper dry on the next one. And then I'm going to have you pick a color. I'm going to do purple where I dip my brush right in the purple and I do a line. Look how dark that is. Okay, so Generally, if you want this look with paint, you shouldn't be using watercolors. You should use acrylic, okay? And so that's not what this project is. And then if you want, you can go ahead and like write no or something next to it. This is too dark. Okay, so do like a what not to do. Okay, then with your round brush all right so if you've been using your flat brush switch to your round one 
Um, you're going to load up your brush with one of the colors you mixed on your lid. It doesn't matter which one. With the round brush, yep. Then we're going to practice with how to use a paintbrush. So, um, if I were to paint like this, can everybody see what my paintbrush is doing right now? What's wrong with that? It's, I'm going side to side, whereas the bristles go up and down. So when you're painting, you always want to pull your paintbrush in the same line as the bristles. Also, notice how my uh, metal is not touching the paper. Okay? So what I'd like you to try now is doing a calligraphy line where you press a little bit harder with the paintbrush and then slowly lift it up so you get a tiny little tip as you pull the paintbrush along. And the flat brush doesn't really do this. You kind of have to do it with the round brush. So see if you can do like a squiggle that starts fat and then slowly you lift the paintbrush so only the very tips touching and it gets really skinny. And so this is how you do detail stuff. So for example, on your final, maybe you start by doing like the wet on wet in a shape and let it dry. And then you might go back with the watercolor and do a pattern on top. So try right now doing like some detail shapes, you know, like maybe a little triangle. And see how I'm only touching the very tip of the brush to the paper. Or like some stripes. Or whatever pattern you want. And again, everything you're doing right now should be the, the watery color that you created on the lid. If it looks too close to this one that says no, that means that you need to add more water to it. And then I'll also show you a cool trick. This is kind of like wet on, a combination of wet on wet and wet on dry. So if everybody looks up front, I'm, br I'm dipping my round brush in just water right now. And then I'm gonna paint a shape like, I'll do maybe like a zigzag. Okay, so I did a zigzag in just water. Then I'm gonna go back with one of the colors I mixed and dot it on top and it'll fill in the spot uh, where I did the zigzag, kind of like tie-dye, but in a straight line where I put the water. So like you could do letters like this too, like I could do an M, or I already did do an M for Mohar. I'll do a K for Carrie also. Did you guys know that was my name? So see how like when I go ahead and put the dot of color, it like fills it in. Has anybody done that before? It's like magic. So as you're mixing colors and stuff, if your lid starts looking like a swamp, you are always welcome at any time to like lift the palette out. Okay, like did you guys know that this can come out? Sometimes it gets kind of stuck. And then you can take just the lid over to the sink and rinse it off. I see a few slumps around the room right now.
How do, do you need more time or should we keep going? Okay. Take 30 more seconds to come to a stopping point and then we'll do wash. Watercolors are deceptively hard. Yeah. They seem like yeah. an elementary thing, but they're harder than you think. Yeah. All right, are we ready to keep going? Okay, let's go ahead and do wash now. Did you guys hear what I was saying? Watercolors, I feel like, are deceptively hard. Like, because we think of them as like an elementary paint, but to use them well in like an advanced way is, is hard to like get it watery enough and to get the look that you're trying to go for and to mix new colors. Okay, so a wash, is everybody ready? A wash in watercolors means a solid color that fills a space, okay? So similar to the wet on wet, you are going to, I'm going to this time use my flat brush and I'm going to fill it with water and I'm going to do a big uh, square shape. You can do whatever shape you want. Would you like me to outline it again so you can see it on the board? You don't need to outline yours, but... No, you. I would use the I would use the the flat brush is easier for this. So you want to fill it with water. I did a square shape. Okay. Then you are going to fill your brush with one of the very watery new colors you have mixed on the lid. And you are going to do horizontal lines starting at the top that go all the way across the whole shape. And then you're going to keep going all the way to the bottom. Then that's not dark enough, right? I want it to probably be a little darker than that. So I'm going to load my brush with the color again. And I'm going to start at the bottom this time and go all the way to the top. And I keep all my brush strokes going the same direction. And then if you need to again, you can do it again. As many times, you can go over it as many times as you need to uh, to get the darkness you want. Is everybody being kind to their neighbors and washing their brush in between uh, dipping it in new colors? Maybe. Okay, so see if you can fill a shape with a flat color right now. It looks darker in real life than it does up there on the screen. I'll keep adding layers. So what you're going for right now is that it's watery and no brush strokes show in the end. We just want it to look really flat. Are we ready for the last one? And then like mine, see how like the paper wrinkled? One thing I forgot to say is we are working on drawing paper right now, which is not as good for painting. It just doesn't work as well as thicker paper. So this should be a little easier on your final because the paper's thicker and it won't wrinkle as easily.
And then like watercolor is it paper is it in a step above like we're using tag board for the final watercolor paper is the next step above that. All right, last step, the fade. I'm gonna use my flat brush again. And I'm gonna do another shape of my choice. You guys can do whatever shape you want. I'm just gonna do a square. This one also needs to have a water base. So I'm filling it with water. And again, you want enough water that it's actually wet, but you don't want to lake. Then, this is very similar to wash, but we're going to fade two different colors together. Okay, so I just realized I was low on one of my colors. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my colors that I mixed on my lid and I'm going to do all, my brush is going to do all horizontal brush strokes. Okay, and I'm going to go across and I'm going to do about two thirds of the way down. Notice how it's darker at the top, and then as you did more brush strokes, it got lighter and lighter. That's what we want. Then you're going to load up your second color, and you're going to start at the bottom and do horizontal brush strokes again, and kind of go two thirds of the way up. And so the goal is to get one color to fade into another color uh, with no brush strokes showing in the end. Except you can see my paper wrinkles where the paint went into little lakes or rivers or whatever you want to call them.